So a very long time ago, almost a decade ago, I've shown you in a video how to do distressing of fabric. And I introduced this little thing here called the shredder tool, which is basically a bunch of uh, hole saw blades uh, epoxied to the base of the hole saw tool. I myself have used it a bit at the start before finding better methods. And uh, today, once again, I have found a much better method. I still use my serrated knife, which I also introduced back then as a tool I use for this kind of thing. It is the same knife I used back then. But as you can see here, I have just dremeled in some teeth on it, so it no longer really works as a knife. It's just a dedicated distressing tool now. Uh, the problem with this, however, is it will do f uh, fine against something uh, rather soft, such as this. It will catch some threads and pull them out, but it takes forever. This is a very gentle tool, at least this one in particular. I'm pretty sure some of you already are like, oh, I have a very brutal serrated knife, it will just tear through the whole thing. Power to you. Anyway, um, let's try this with the shredder. It has... Um, well, first of all, it has the disadvantage you have to find which way the teeth are facing and then you just go with it and then it does this. At least for me it does. A lot of times, which is why with this, gotta be kind of careful. Again, historical value, nothing else. Now, this is something that has been with me after my uncle gave it to me. Uh, since before the Nuclear Snell channel started. And this is a multi-tool. And uh, a lot, if not all, multi-tools uh, will have this. This kind of a saw. And if you look closely enough, you will see the particular shape of those very sharp triangular double row teeth. They're really hard and really sharp. And they're arranged like this. This is important before uh, all of you go to the comments and ask, can I use this kind of saw, can I use that kind of saw? The answer is, I don't know. Um, I found this to work perfectly well. I tried it on another multi-tool, it works just as well on this one. And uh, the length is also perfect, it's very controllable. And let's just take a look at what it does. So, let me fold my fabric here like this and then give it a go. So right now I'm going 90 degrees. Take a look at that. It's happening really fast, but at the same time it's very controllable because those teeth, they just can't wait to catch some fabric. I'm not really using a lot of force because if I catch myself here, I just can't go further and you see it puts a bend on the saw. It's probably not uh, really manufacturer recommended to use it like this. This is designed for a sewing motion like this, not for sideways motion, so it might break. I haven't used this uh, for a long enough time just yet to tell whether or not it will. And as you see, uh, as usual, I'm applying the usual precautions, uh, such as pu pulling it away from myself, not towards my body, not towards my fingers, and I'm also really watching out not to accidentally scrape over my thumb or my fingers, which I've done quite a couple of times uh, in my life, and it's always very unpleasant, which is why uh, usually when I'm not exactly uh, doing a demonstration, I would wear a thick glove with which it would be less of a problem to scrape over it, you know, on my left hand, with which I hold the fabric. Anyway, back to this thing. I'm not applying a ton of pressure, I'm just, you know, scraping it up a bit. And just after a couple of passes, you can see I can apply a slight distressed effect like this, or something more severe with holes, depending on how I hold it, it's all in the feel. Um, just gotta feel it, man. Uh, what I can also do is an effect like this. So, with this, I could be going sideways, of course, but that will take a long time. I could instead just use the saw in the direction as it's intended to be used, which is back and forth. 
to make a small sawed incision, I guess. But what I can also do is, as I go backwards and forwards, so back and forth, I also go sideways, so like this. And you can see that just in a couple of strokes, I think you can see that well on the camera, I'll show it to you in a sec. Just in a couple of strokes, come on camera, who programmed this? Okay. See, this is awesome. It didn't cost me that much muscle power or anything. It's just a uh, really an amazing result. This just works amazing. This is like, how could I not see this tool for all those years? Let's try it with the belt. So I'm gonna put a belt, uh, how shall I do this? Let's try it sideways, right? And then just saw through it. While moving away, it really bites in, it just really wants to tear. Yeah, with it being bunched up like this, kind of seems to work a little bit better. Look at that. Not that great for cutting belts, I'm really torturing myself through this right now. There we go, now it finally separated, but look at those beautiful frayed ends. You don't get that with scissors. Alright, let's uh, check out some other materials. And uh, as you see, I'm also doing kind of like a 45 degree movement here. So again, as I said, really gotta watch out not to give it too much of a sideways pressure because it might break, who knows. I'm just kind of uh, letting it, as I move, I let it bite in, which it does immediately, and then I just pull it away with kind of even a bit of like semi-loose wrist here. Works great, again, for, for those of you especially who are newbies, give me just a sec. I strongly recommend wearing a thick, thick, sturdy protective glove on the hand with which you hold your piece, if you do that. Cause a lot of times you're like, oh, this looks awesome, and then you just, do this by accident, right? And uh, I never chop my finger off immediately, or my thumb for that matter, but I scraped it badly in the past. It hurts. Like, it didn't kill me, but it hurts. Take a look at that beautiful hole, just in seconds. Anyway, um, I think you get the point. And the cool thing about this is, uh, at least this one is exchangeable. So I have a spare somewhere lying around and could probably buy more if it breaks. Uh, I don't know if there are even better tools out there for distressing, but this one so far is my favorite. It's just so aggressive while being so controllable. Like I can either just tear through a thing in seconds or I can do a very, very fine controlled controlled distressing. Yeah, look at this, just a tiny bit used. Or let's really go crazy on this. Just in a few seconds, a deep, deep torn hole. Let's do a gentle one right next to it. Uh, 
Now this fabric seems to want to disintegrate real fast when coming in contact with this. This is what I got. Alright, um, I hope you found this video interesting. Have fun crafting and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!